President Biden speaking just a short time ago, telling reporters he has decided exactly how he will respond to Iran-backed proxy attacks that killed three American soldiers. So young. And Biden's response may be the single most consequential decision of his presidency. Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany, here with my co-host, Harris Faulkner. And joining me today, host of the Kennedy Saves the World podcast, Kennedy, Fox News contributor and president of American Spirit Enterprises, Tammy Bruce, and GOPAC chairman, David Avella. The White House facing growing pressure to hit back harder and more directly after the deaths of Sergeant William Jerome Rivers, Specialist Brianna Alexandria Moffitt, and Specialist Kennedy Layden Sanders, all of them heroes, all of them sacrificing their lives for us. And after U.S. forces in the Middle East have been targeted at least 160 times since October 7th, the Biden administration, you can see all of those attacks there, the Biden administration is reportedly on alert, listen to this, for a potential attack by Iran-backed groups both in the U.S. and abroad. The president says he knows what he's going to do. Yes. So President Biden was out of sight yesterday, planning what he was going to do. He now knows what he's going to do. But Jonathan Lemire at Politico also seems to have a pretty good idea of what President Biden's going to do. This just befuddles me, Kennedy. I saw this last night. Look at this. This is in Politico. They say this, and this is based on accounts from officials, I assume in the administration and the Pentagon somewhere, that among the options on the table for the Pentagon are striking Iranian personnel in Syria or Iraq or Iranian naval assets in the Persian Gulf. According to the officials, they go on to say the officials suggested that once the president gives the go-ahead, the retaliation would likely begin in the next couple of days. Why does the press know this? Because someone in the administration is telling them, and that might be out of frustration, because whoever is privy to these conversations, they're really upset at the direction the president is taking. Because, you know, his foreign policy, it does look feeble. It looks directionless. And how he performs or missteps in speeches is sort of a metaphor for his larger foreign policy. And the American people, you know, obviously we want the president to protect us. We want to know that, that we are safe, that we are not going to be retaliated against here in the United States. So we have those concerns, but also there are concerns, and you know there's a civil war brewing within his administration, and, and not to mention Congress, because they want back the power to declare war. They want more congressional power, and they're going to fight the president over this. So that's essentially three factions who are fighting against him, who are making foreign policy a much bigger issue than he would like it to be going into a presidential election. Yes, and terrifyingly, you know, the Biden administration, they are walking blindly. Prepare for a very bad case of whiplash as you watch this. Listen to the Biden administration. In just four months, Listen to the language change. The war in Yemen is in its 19-month truce. For now, the Iranian attacks against U.S. forces have stopped. Our presence in Iraq is stable. I emphasize for now because all of that can change. And the Middle East region is quieter today than it has been in two decades. I would argue that we have not seen a situation as, as dangerous as the one we're facing now across the region since at least 1973. It's safe four months ago, and now it's never been as dangerous. You know, Biden's foreign policy is dangerous for the country. And and I, I don't even think he realizes what he just said. We sell weapons to a whole lot of people. That does not make us complicit in the wars. The complicity comes in command and control. It's not that just Iran has given them weapons or sold them weapons or trained and paid for. It's having them do Iran's bidding. That's, right. That's what makes them complicit in the war. So, so I don't want... President Biden to misrepresent the United States now in what it does uh, in selling whatever it sells. That's not what this is about. What this is about is 
command and control. Are you getting people to do your killing, your dirty work? And that's what Iran is doing. So first of all, he's got to get his story straight. And then he's got to be able to say it several times a day. But the thing that really gets me is that, according to Jackie Heinrich's reporting, not even 45 minutes ago, she said, Harris, I keep looking. The president has not put on his schedule at the White House reaching out to the families of the three patriots that we just lost and also either attending their funerals, making some sort of contact and recognition. Even above and beyond that, if you could even say it's above and beyond, how about recognizing all of those who've been hit 165 times since October 17th? Those are patriots. They're the best among us. Certainly he has time for that if he has time for a $250,000 delicious broccoli dinner or whatever they're going to be serving yeah. in the two states he's visiting. Yeah, because John Kirby couldn't confirm whether he'd be at the dignified transfer. I mean, this is the deadliest attack since the Abbey Gate. This is the first time uh, since the Korean War that an aerial strike has killed American ground troops. I think being there matters. I think there's nothing more important you can do. Something else that matters, Tammy, is history and accountability. And if you go back and look at Joe Biden's tweets from 2020, let's just take a walk down memory lane. Donald Trump brought us dangerously close to starting a new war with Iran without any semblance of a plan. I don't seem to remember that one at all. Then he goes on to say Donald Trump has no strategy when it comes to Iran, no end game. The only way out is his self-made crisis. Sounds like you're describing your own foreign policy just three years in advance. He goes on to say, make no mistake, the situation with Iran is a crisis of Donald Trump's own making. This is back in 2020 again. And then I'm thankful, thankful no one was hurt in last night's attack, but we're only in this mess because Donald Trump pulled out of the Iran deal. That was three years ago, but how prescient to review that today. It is, and it reveals, of course, and I could think he doesn't even understand. He's making people remember what Trump was able to do, the killing of Soleimani, yes, getting out of that deal. We weren't, we stopped throwing money at the Iranians. The Iran was on its knees. They were having obviously major difficulties. With Soleimani, it shocked them, and yet they could not respond because Trump had this image of being, you know, they didn't know what he was going to do, which was great. But you've, you've got this, it's, it, it tells you they also understand what the nature of these relationships are and what Iran is. And his remarks about, oh, well, you know, Iran is, sells them weapons. That was a direct attempt to mitigate Iran's position and their actions as though yes. he's speaking for them to defend them. The, Iran the Iranians don't even need to do it now. They've got Biden doing it in addition to the three deaths. Dozens injured. You've got a 46-year-old husband, brother, best friend, two 20, 23 and a 24-year-old, the children and loved ones of American families who went to, yes, do a job, get an education, defend this country, etc., and they're out. They're gone. And generations from those people are gone. No children, no grandchildren. And this is a guy who's going to a fundraiser now, what, in Florida? Yeah. He, they they don't know if they're going to go to Dover. A it's outrageous. Look at the scroll. I just want people to look at the scroll on our screen. Yeah. Like, what's happened since October 17th? All of like, these how do we tolerate? How do we tolerate this? Nothing. Nothing meaningful done. You had eight strikes in the Islamic resistance, nine on the Houthis. They don't seem to have gotten the message. And I agree with you, Kennedy, about the officials speaking out. They're frustrated because you hop on over to another political article and you find that amid intense bombardment from Iran-backed groups, more than a dozen, more than a dozen current and former U.S. officials, lawmakers, congressional aides say Washington's deprioritization of the Middle East and specifically its approach to Iran has left the U.S. vulnerable. There is a theme in this in Biden administration, that is Americans' personal security is an afterthought, whether that's national security, whether that's border security, or whether that's what Americans are facing in their communities as crime continues to arise. And there's going to be a lot of people continuing to look at this administration during this election year. One will be our partners in the Middle East, whether that be Jordan or Saudi Arabia or Kuwait, who say, are we going to continue to allow Iran to cause problems in the Middle East? You're going to have a lot of family members of service who go vote, of service members who are going to say, is this president doing everything to protect my loved one who is over there fighting for our national security? This has big implications for Biden, not only for our country, but also for Biden's re-election. And that's what this is about. 24-year-old Kennedy Sanders, her mom, I just can't believe I'll never be able to hug and kiss my baby again. Life is so unfair. I just want my baby 
Brianna Moffat's mom, she was 23 years old, just want to read her words. I will never get to cook you your favorite food. We will never get to talk on the phone. I will never see you walk through my front door again. Brianna Moffat was killed this morning. Just know that a piece of my heart and soul will always be missing. Love you, baby girl. Rest easy. You will always be my firstborn. We hold them in our prayers today and every day. Thank you for your sacrifice. You are three heroes. Squad member Corey Bush, now under federal investigation, the breaking news, next.